Nightmerica is an independently produced podcast. If you like what we're doing, please consider supporting patreon.com slash nightmerica. Welcome to Nightmerica, a podcast that takes you on a tour of the abnormal, paranormal, weirdly true, and truly weird in every corner across this nation. Because whether it's ghosts, aliens, monsters, or monstrous humans, there's something strange in your neighborhood. Episode 36, Checking In to Terror. Ooh, that's a good one. Thanks, but it doesn't really say what it is. It's hotels. We're talking about hotels. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't even know why I bother coming up with the puns. I mainly do it for me. And for me. No, mainly for me. (laughs) And hopefully maybe for the amusement of some people out there. I'm going to... Yes. I'm going to go ahead and say at the top... Well, first off, I guess I should say, Hey, everyone, I'm Aaron Sagers, and I'm your co-host for Nightmerica. Hey, Nightmericans. Hi, Nightmericans. I'm Britt. And Britt... And Aaron, uh, we, oh, I don't know why I'm addressing myself on this. I'm a little out of it today, as we've already said. But, it, it yeah, I need to put a uh, warning out there. So I'm still in Key West as I am recording this. And uh, there was just a tropical storm slash hurricane that passed through Etta. And even though it's passed, it's quite lovely outside. The wind is still pretty strong. So you might occasionally during this episode hear a banging up against the window of the apartment I'm staying in right now. So yeah, it was a real um, creepy banging sound. Yeah. Trust me. The first time you hear it, oh my God. it makes you jump a little bit. Oh, yeah. There you go. In the middle of the night, shit my pants. Yeah. And thankfully I didn't cause I was in bed and it's, <laughs> It's, you know, you definitely don't want to shit the bed. No. So, but anyhow, uh, also, hey, guess what? Uh, Nightmerica, we are still sponsored by Manscaped, the men's grooming tool, and it's the right tool for the job. Yeah. And, and the job being, you know, Whatever keeping your... Whatever Manscaped job you have. Keeping, keeping your, your regions cleaned up you Even know and they have a nose hair trimmer oh that's right I'm yeah i get it for yeah. for christmas anyhow so we're talking about hotels today yeah. before we get to that i really want to uh, listeners out there so do you like this banter up front or are you just like cut straight to the ghosty stuff and, oh, the, yeah. and the true crap that's a good question yeah. let us know <laughs> like please just shut up we don't need the five minutes of you guys Recapping your week and your dietary habits and all of that. Yeah. But it's a good time for us to catch up because we're yeah, both we so busy during the week. Yeah. We don't really talk outside of the podcast. Well, that's not entirely true. True. Is it? We sometimes like it? send each other cocktails that we're having. True. We should work on that. Yeah. We should work on that. Um, so... So weird news. Yeah. What what do you what do you got? Lay it on me. Um, I'm sure you have your Google alerts set for this. But did you know Gwyneth Paltrow released her holiday gift guide for Goop? Well, you know, you know me so well that <laughs> yes, I keep my Goop Google alerts going. My Google alerts almost you might <laughs> hey, say. Yeah. I don't you wouldn't say that. That's a terrible no, pun. That's but that's a terrible pun. So, I mean, I know this, it's very familiar, and yet I still want you to tell me the the, the news. Well, it relates to the podcast because on her list is a $2,000 glitter acrylic Ouija board from the high-end accessory designer Edie Parker. She makes, like, custom acrylic bags that are quite beautiful. But for Gwynny, she made a $2,000 Ouija board, and in the description they write... It makes for fun after dinner entertainment and to have a cocktail or two beforehand. Hmm. Will you be buying it, using it? What are your thoughts? Um, as you're speaking, I'm trying I'm looking it up. Two thousand dollar Ouija board. Well no, I definitely won't be purchasing it. 
It's quite Secondly, beautiful. Secondly, one of my practically, from a practical standpoint, I'm curious to see how it would slide across the board, which is really important. Your planchette needs to slide across the board. The planchette is really beautiful. With some ease. And the additional, additional question that I have with all this is if they, I'm sure they did, but getting the official approval from Ouija brand, from Ouija board to do this, because oh, that's a good I'm, point. I'm sure they must have from, from Hasbro actually is who controls it. Well, Hasbro and then, um, Oh, I forget the other company involved in it, but you know, you have to license it. Yeah. So I'm sure they did. they but yeah, I'm looking at it now. I don't, I don't, I'm curious to see how that planchette would move across the board, but it's interesting that they also don't have in this, they, so it looks very glittery. So my thought is glitter might make it difficult to slide across, but, it's but inside it, the acrylic. So it's smooth. Oh, okay. See, you're smart. You're, you know, this stuff better than I, so then <laughs> I it would love be fine. Amy Parker's bags. But well, I'm highly skeptical of. I mean, listen, if I were to buy a Ouija board, I would want this one. But I'm not. I would not. Two thousand dollars for it? Heck no. I would spend two thousand dollars on a Ouija board, but not this one. I would do it on a antique one. Interestingly, they uh, this also does not have the little window in the planchette. planchette. Yeah, it's like an arrow. We'll post it. Yeah, picture, which is. You guys. It's not required. Yeah, let's give Goop some free advertising. Good call, Britt. <laughs> My mom loves Gwyneth Paltrow. Really? Yes. Um, I know. Well, there's a lot of emotions about her, I know. There's, uh, well, I was just going to ask about the, <laughs> I'm not going to ask about this with your mom. Let's, yes. Yeah. The infamous candle. And they have a perfume now, too. Do you want me to get you that for Christmas? So since you're referencing it, now we have to go there. Now we have to talk about it. The, she about has a the, candle that smells like her vagina and a candle that smells like an orgasm. Okay. Right. So the, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also, I'm going to give, I'm going to give a shout out to, um, friends of mine who run the ghost and hose podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. We follow them on Instagram. Okay. We do, and if you ever listen to their podcast, and you should, they get quite funny, they do talk about Gwyneth on occasion, and I think, I'm sure they must have talked about this, but they, uh, uh, Nawal, who is one of the, the co-hosts, I think refers to Gwyneth as a flaxen-haired she-demon, <laughs> and, and, um, so I I get quite amused when I listen to them talking about Gwyneth, and I pretty much echo a lot of their sentiments about Gwyneth. I don't hate her with a deep despair. I just think it's a bit of a a a crazed, somewhat shammy uh, company. Goop is yeah. I mean the jade egg that you're supposed to put up your lady business to tone it, like, that's not safe. And, they like, doctors have come out being like, do not sell this, do not buy, this is not safe. So I think she, like, takes advantage of, you know, brand, like, branding herself like that. But I will say there were parts of her TV show on Netflix that I really enjoyed. Yeah, so... uh the Yoni Egg harnesses the power of energy work, crystal healing, and a Kegel-like physical practice. Insert the egg in your vagina and feel the connection with your body by squeezing and releasing the egg. <laughs> Step one, how to use. Wash your egg with... I'm not going to go down no, this whole no, thing. It's Don't use it, guys. Don't use it. Yeah. And don't spend $55 on an egg. Period. But, well, don't, yeah, don't shove it no. anywhere. No. Kids out there, your old pal Aaron here. And, you know, I, love when I like white, to. White men tell me what to do with my lady bits. Yeah. I can't get enough of that. 
You know, I like to have fun and I sometimes get a little bit crazy myself. But you know what's no laughing matter? Shoving a rose quartz egg up your lady bits. <laughs> don't do it. It's not safe. No. Stay in school, don't do drugs, and don't shove eggs up your vajayjay. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's the weird news. $2,000 Ouija board. I feel like I feel like we should include a PSA in every episode. So, okay, well, there's that. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you mine. It's not as good as yours. <laughs> but uh, Frida Kahlo is her ghost haunting the halls of her Mexico City Museum. Some say yes. And this is in at Casa Azul, her former home. And it's been about 70 years after the death. Of, she died in 1954. But only 47 years old. She was very young. But Frida Kahlo remains really an incredibly famous and beloved artist. And I would argue like her, her legacy only continues to grow. So the story is that the home that she shared with Diego Rivera, the muralist, that her ghost is wandering those halls. And that... There's been some sightings, and curators say sometimes she returns after dark. Her shape has been seen filling out corsets and skirts as if she's borrowing her old clothing for the night. And there's also a article that was published in the California website called South Bay, and they wrote that a museum's director said that they had heard the sound of footsteps from Frida's office in the basement when no one was there, and they had witnessed the appearance of wet footprints on the grounds, seemingly out of nowhere. Hmm. Uh, but this could be a benign, playful, even welcome spirit. And, oh, there's a story that, there is a legend, I've heard the legend that while she was being cremated, her corpse sat up from the heat and appeared to smile as her hair caught fire, which is really kind of quite terrifying to That's think about. That's terrifying. But so this article comes from Artnet News, news.artnet.com, and it's interesting. So maybe she's popping back into her old, her old house. Why I not? I mean, a book just came out. Uh, maybe like right before Halloween. What would Frida do? So maybe everyone like talking about her again is getting her energy going. It's, it's an interesting thought. I, I, I think that, you know, giving that acknowledgement, that energy, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're onto something. And I do, I mean, I, I am not an art historian, but I do think that her legacy continues to grow. And so, Oh yeah. Who knows? So interesting. Well, that's, that's the news. That's a quick news break. You know, I think, that I don't know where I was going with this. Let's talk about the topic. Let's talk about hotels. Hotels. I mean, you have yeah. stayed in many a creepy hotel. Yeah. And um, some of them not even haunted. Some are just creepy because of uh, really dodgy locations yeah. <laughs> and and dodgy, uh, dodgy management. But, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly travel a lot pre-2020. And I've stayed in a lot of hotels and in a lot of haunted hotels and all across the world, in fact. And that's why this topic really sucks for me. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a good topic, but it's also like one of those that, which one do I pick? Yeah, you got a lot of options. Do I want to go to, do I want to tell stories of my favorites? Do I want to tell the most famous? I tried to like lean away from the most famous because some of the most famous would be like the Stanley Hotel. Alisa Lamb, Cecil. Cecil Hotel. Well, that's, that's, and that's a, not a great hotel, no. right? That's, no. But I, the, but a lot of the haunted hotels are actually legitimately great. Like the Stanley Hotel mm -hmm. in Colorado. That's a good one. And they were recently threatened by a fire. There was the Colorado fires, which was oh, really yeah. 
threatening them. And the Stanley, in a, a good show, actually was putting up some of the firefighters and feeding them as well. So, Class. which is pretty amazing. So, and that's the the hotel that is famously associated with Stephen King's The Shining. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stories behind that. The Mount Washington Hotel in New Hampshire. So there's so many that I, I was just going back and forth on, but which one do you pick? And from the paranormal perspective with these, it's difficult because about 15 years ago, not a lot of places wanted to say that they had a haunted mm -hmm. hotel. It was not really good for business. But then the paranormal tourism really kicked into high gear. And then so suddenly really wanted to market it. People wanted to market their haunted hotels. And charge extra sometimes even to stay yeah. in the haunted rooms. And with that, once you start marketing, the history can get a little bit muddy and things are added to the legend that really have no basis in fact not with every place but it does happen a lot so you really have to do a lot of a hell of a lot of research to parse it all out yeah so what i'm saying is thanks brett for choosing this topic <laughs> you're welcome i'm excited about my story i mean have you stayed in a haunted hotel that's that you know of? That, not that I know of. I was like, while typing this, I was trying to like rack my brain. I don't think I ever have. I mean, where I live now is a hotel that's converted into apartments. And right. it claims, well, my super, who no longer works here, um, claims that there was a woman who jumped out of a window and like all the blocks in that, like, where she would have fallen are haunted. And then separately, um, one of the maintenance guys told me that this apartment that is in this block has a lot of electrical issues and like the microwave just like flies open. So I don't know. I, I guess I kind of live in a haunted hotel. I'm always fascinated by the places that are probably haunted that are not like these old stately locations. Mm -hmm but have a lot of supposed hauntings and or, or motels even things like that that's probably where the true crime element comes in a lot and I, I think like pretty much anywhere can be haunted but when you consider that hotels motels are places that that the people's people pass through constantly yeah, a lot of people pass through a lot of different kinds energy. of energies and in their stays, there can be passion, joy, tragedy, people staying because they're going to the funeral of someone, people mm -hmm. staying because they're getting married or on a honeymoon. A lot of different, a lot of big moments take place in, in hotels. So they might leave a little bit of that energy behind. So. I find that all to be very fascinating. In fact, on Travel Channel, there's a whole show dedicated to it called Hotel Paranormal. So, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hosted, yeah. hosted by Dan Aykroyd. So, or or narrated by Dan Aykroyd. So, you know, there's enough to hold up an entire show. And on Paranormal Caught on Camera, we're constantly doing stuff, footage that's coming from hotels. There's one coming up that I probably can't talk about, but Ooh, not not from a not from a fancy hotel, but a kind of famous hotel, but not fancy. And that one is, that one's coming up as well. So, hey, anyway, let's dive in. Let's actually do the story. Or should we do a sponsor break first? Let's, let's do, do a sponsor, sponsor break. break first. Nightmarica is excited to announce we have a new sponsor, Manscaped. And to talk about the men's grooming kits, we have a really big fan of Manscaped. But not a man, a Sasquatch. From the Florida Everglades, let's welcome Skunk Ape to the show. Thanks for joining, Mr. Ape. Oh, Skunk is fine, just fine. That's, uh, that's what my friends call me. Even though you're an elusive cryptid, you're able to have a social life? Oh, sure, sure. Wood booger, yeah, we mow, mow, wendigo, mow galong. We all, we all hang out. Well, that's great. With all those friends, it's probably important to look your best. 
we take a lot of pride in how we look uh, in the Sasquatch community, especially uh, since, uh, as you can imagine, there ain't a whole heck of a lot of us out there, so it gets pretty darn competitive getting attention from the Lady Squatches. So the Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped has a durable, skin-safe ceramic blade when you groom your, uh, Squatchy regions. Don't you know it? That Lawnmower 3.0 holds an edge, so I'm less likely to nick my nugs. It's happened before, and it ain't pretty. There's blood everywhere. Everyone down in the glades heard me howl out that one time. Whoop whoop! That's what that's what it sounded like when I nicked my nugs, but not with this lawnmower 3.0. Dude, that's intense. I have certainly been there. It is no fun at all. Skunky, I imagine grooming down there probably takes a lot of time because you're a pretty big guy. Well, you know what they say about big feet. Big shoes? Big balls! Yep, right, sizable, sasquasticles, big old ones. But with them lithium-ion batteries I can charge that puppy up on the USB dock, I can use it for 90 minutes. It's even waterproof, so I can fire it up in the glades and take a good long time getting my squashticles right where they needs to be. Well, with that waterproof technology, that's got to be helpful in the glades. Or even for a human like me who uses the shower. Is the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 getting you noticed down there? Only in the right ways. All the lady squatches, or, or men, no no judgment, they take notice. But I can still stay hidden, because with that quiet stroke technology, it does not make a lot of noise and attract unwanted look and lose And that's a very important part of the squatch code. You gotta stay undercover, you know? I can even groom up my squashticles in the middle of the night, because it's got an LED light on it, so you can see where your Patterson and Gimlin are. It's a memorable pair. And speaking of memorable pairs, you also like the Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Well, you might have heard I have a bit of an odor issue, hence the nickname Skunky. And with the Florida humidity, uh, I can smell pretty darn ripe down there. So I use that Manscaped Ball Deodorant to, to make the squashicles smell fresh as a daisy and the ball toner to freshen up when skunk turns to funk. Maybe we should start calling you Flowers instead of Skunky. Well, Skunky, if you or your Squatch Buddies or any listeners out there want to groom safely, and who doesn't, head over to manscaped.com and enter code NIGHTMERICA for 20% off plus free shipping off your order. For one more time, that's... Squatchscaped. No, no, it's not. It's Manscaped. Manscaped. The right tools for the job. All right, it's Manscaped. Right tools for the job. Make use of that code. That's a great code. It's the best. Code. You know, I and, you. and I also just want to say I like our I like our podcast title, Nightmareica. That's a fun podcast title. I know, I liked it. Remember so, when we were originally going to call it the podcast? P O D D like odd. Yeah. Glad we. And then we didn't. I'm glad we didn't. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't as well. <laughs> I like Nightmareica good punny name so let's hear your story let's okay. do it let's, let's check in to terror we are checking into the elegante hotel in beaumont texas um i am doing the story of the body in room 348 the murder of greg flanagan this story is crazy okay so on september 15th 2010 Greg Flanagan was 55 years old, and he was traveling for work in Beaumont, Texas. He and his brother owned an oil land leasing company, and his job was being the land man, which means, like, he deals with the titles of the properties, and so he spent a ton of time traveling for work, often with large amounts of money, checks, things like that, because it was the oil business, and this is Texas. Um, so he'd stayed in the Elegante Hotel before, and like people who travel for work a lot, he had a routine. So he would go in, he would turn the AC way down because he liked a cold room. He would lay a towel on the bed, and on top of that, he would place his cigarettes in an ashtray. Then he pulls out a Reese's Crispy Crunch Bar and a root beer and turns on Iron Man 2. I okay. mean, Excellent way to start the night without the smoke. In, right. But I'm, I like this guy's mojo. Yeah, no, I'm on board with this guy. I also turn the AC way down. That's one of my routines when I get into a hotel. For sure. And 
I don't know, do you check all the rooms to make certain there's like no lurking murderers or whatever? 110% and I put tape over the people. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely gotta do that. There's a lot of creeps out there. Total creeps. Continue. Uh, So he also wanted to make popcorn at some point in the night, but the breaker tripped when he turned on the microwave, so someone from the front desk came to fix it. And we also know that at 7 p.m. he was emailing his wife of just over 10 years, Susie, as she was filing their tax extension and was updated, um, updating him on how it was going. And he responded, you're doing good, babe. Well, Susie and Greg spoke every morning. And when he didn't call her the next morning, she called him several times and never answered. So she called his office thinking, like, maybe he went in for an early meeting, but he wasn't there and his coworkers hadn't heard from him. So the coworkers went to the hotel to see what was going on and the manager opened the room and they found Greg deceased and doubled over on the floor with the cigarette still in his left hand. The, his skin was gray blue. He was cold to the touch. He was deceased. Um, a police and medical examiner come in. They notice no sign of a break in. He still had cash and checks on him, so it wasn't a robbery. And he didn't have any major injuries. Like, his, he wasn't bruised. No limbs were broken. All he had was a rug burn on his cheek. And this is probably going to make you wince. But he had a cut on his scrotum, which they determined came from the kick of a steel-toed boot. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that did make me... Sorry, dudes um, everywhere. Clinch and, you know, yeah. Yep. Uh, So Detective Scott Apple went to the guest's surrounding rooms to ask if they've heard anything. Um, But no one complained of any noise or disturbance, which is super weird. Um, The group staying in room 349 directly next door was a group of men from Wisconsin in for an electrician project. When they were interviewed, uh, the guest in 349, Lance Mueller, was concerned, and he was asking, like, what happened? He said he'd only heard Greg coughing that night. Um, Of course, the other guests were terrified that there was still a killer in the hotel, but Detective Apple calmed them down, and he, at that point, believed it was just a natural causes thing. Um, And it's actually what Susie and most of Greg's friends thought, that he had been an avid smoker for a good chunk of his life, maybe he just like had a heart attack and fell off the bed onto his stomach. But if it's a heart attack, that does not make a true crime podcast. So where is the twist? So the medical examiner took Greg in and worked on the autopsy. And he said that his cause of death was being beaten to death or crushed by a heavy object. Because while there were very few external injuries, his internal organs were completely torn. Wow. Like his heart, his liver, stomach, intestines, torn up. Completely ripped, shredded. Okay. But he had no right. br- br- no bruises. Yeah. Is that crazy? Yeah, I mean, I'm not... A doctor, but that seems rather unusual, yes. It's like the Dyatlov Pass incident, where, like, they have all these internal injuries, but no external. So, like, what's up with that? If he was beaten to death, he would have had, you know, all sorts of bruises. And the fact that none of the people in the nearby rooms heard anything, I'm not a dude, but if I was and I got kicked in the groin by a steel-toed boot, I don't think I would be silent about it. I think you would definitely cry out in pain. Well, unless you're gagged. Oh, well, good point. Um, So hearing this and seeing the results of the autopsy, Detective Scott Apple knew it was no longer natural causes. Like, what happened? Uh, there's really few murders in Beaumont, Texas. Most of them, like in my research, were pretty like cut and dry. It's like maybe 10 a year and they're usually like drug deals gone wrong. Um, So Scott needed to figure out what was going on. There were no video cameras in the hallway directly outside his room. They were only the ones at the entrances and exits and front desk. And so they watched those and didn't see anyone, you know, 
suspicious. They were able to kind of verify who everyone was. Um, and he was happily married to Susie. They, he did have a significant amount of life insurance because of his really successful oil land business. But I mean, they looked into Susie and found absolutely no motive. So she hires a private investigator named Ken Vernon. He was a former Long Island detective, and I watched an investigation discovery show that he was on, and he is like Krusty McCrusterson's like typical Long Island detective, no nonsense. He seems like a great dude. Um, he partnered with Detective Apple, and they combed through every possible bit of evidence First, they checked the hotel worker who came to fix the microwave when he was making popcorn. This guy's name is Ryan, and he's like a pretty big dude, and he's actually a registered sex offender. Um, And so they require, well, they ask him, they don't require him, they ask him to take a lie lie detector test, and he passes. I mean, to be fair, I don't really care for lie detector tests, but, you know, whatever. Um... Crossing all of his T's and dotting his I's, P.I. Brennan then decides to interview the supervisor of the electricians who stayed next door just to see if, like, he, if these guys had mentioned on the job that they had heard anything that they maybe forgot about. And the supervisor says, oh, are you looking into the guy that got shot at the hotel? And Brennan's like, no, we're looking into an unsolved homicide. And the supervisor's like, oh, well, I don't know about that. So this sparks Brennan's interest and he goes back to the room. But it's been almost a year since his death. So it's been cleaned like how many million times? Tons of people have stayed there. So they're digging all around in nooks and crannies for a bullet, but they don't find anything. And then he looks at the wall and finds at about his hip height a perfectly round hole that had been filled in with toothpaste and toilet paper. And so he goes on the other side in room 349 where those electricians had been staying and finds like the matching lineup. They clear it all out and it is a perfect bullet hole. So he goes back to the medical examiner and unfortunately Greg had been cremated. So they can't like exhume him to find a bullet, but they were able to pull out pictures from the autopsy and the medical examiner admits like, yes, it's crazy. And it seems highly unlikely that he could have no external injuries except the tear in his scrotum, which looking at it, that was where the bullet entered. The bullet went up his scrotum, ding, 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 all around his insides. And that's what killed him. Isn't that ouch. insanity? Yes, and also, ouch. Right? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, in the autopsy, they did not find a bullet? They didn't find a bullet, but because he and had they, no there wasn't obvious any... bullet holes, they weren't really looking for one. Yeah, but, okay, well, I mean, I would assume a coroner would still... You know, you're looking for anything unusual. You would think. I would think. But it could have been a bad coroner. And, and if it's, you're right. And, I mean, there was no exit wound. No. So this thing's playing pinball. This bullet is playing pinball and inside his body. body. It's insane. Well, who, got the, who got the ashes? Did, I, did the ash, did his... Uh, who? Where did the ashes? Oh, that's reside? a good question. I don't know. No, no article said, but that's a great question. That's. I wouldn't. I mean, I don't know, but I don't. I would think that it wouldn't burn a bullet, melt a bullet down. Yeah, that's a great. So, point. The, and they do check. I'm pretty certain. Look, you're more of the true crime detective here, but I do think they would check the the sort of remnants after the cremation, sort of what didn't burn down, what what didn't melt down. Maybe. I don't know. If any of our listeners, well, if any of our listeners work in a crematorium, can you please write in? Also, that's just cool, and I would like to talk to you anyway. 
<laughs> right. Well, so this is like a year after his death. The electricians that were staying in the next room were called in. Their names were Tim, St- Tim Steinmetz and Trent Paisano, and they confessed to what happened that night. They had been drinking in their friend Lance Mueller's room, and Trent said he was going down to Lance's car to get a bottle of whiskey, and Lance told him, bring up his gun while he was there. When he came back, Lance took the gun and, air quotes, jokingly, pointed it at Tim and Trent. Don't point guns at people jokingly, everybody. Um, The gun accidentally discharged and hit the wall. The men then hightail it out of there. Lance runs back to his car, dumps the gun, and they all go to the hotel bar so they have an alibi. Um, And they don't tell anyone. And they were interviewed by police on a body cam. And they're acting like all concerned and are like, yeah, if you need any help, like we're happy to help. But geez, we didn't hear anything so crazy. Except for the fact that they filled the bullet hole through the wall with toothpaste and toilet paper. And the next morning, they're seeing him pulled out of the wheelchair, and they still don't say anything. And in fact, when this is all over, when Lance goes back home to Wisconsin, he hires a lawyer immediately and stores the gun in the lawyer's safe. So they bring these guys in. They're confessing. They, uh, because the two guys like confessed everything and like ratted out, not ratted, but like told about Lance, they weren't convicted of anything. They got off free, but Lance pleaded no contest to manslaughter and he was sentenced to 10 years in jail in 2012. I mean, this is certainly a sad story. It doesn't surprise me that people would be drunk and goofing off and accidentally do that. And, and then have your oh crap moment where you just want to cover it up. But it's insane you, that a bullet can do that. Wait, did you say they checked the room next door to see what had happened? Like at the initial investigation? No, no, the these guys, the electricians or whatever. Yeah. Did they they got gained access into the other room? Yeah. How and did the, they get it? Oh, did the electricians get access to Greg's room? No, they did not. They just filled in the hole. Yes, they just filled it in with toothpaste. I'm sure, like, they just put the toothpaste up and, like, squirted it in. And, like, so maybe it if fill a cleaning... on his side, too? Yes. And, it, like, I saw a picture of it. It's, like, um, it's not a super thick wall. It's pretty a thin wall. And it's, like, um almost maybe like a plaster wall. Like it's not like there's, Oh God, I wish I had, I knew how to explain this. It's not like there's okay. wooden yeah, beams they, they, and like a hole. Yeah. In the yeah. Middle. This, they're just like probably drywall or like yes. pretty, pretty thin walls. I get that. I'm just, I'm just thinking about this hole. I mean, look, they confessed to the, the one guy confessed and was convicted. Oh, yeah. He pleaded no contest. It seems like there's something weird there. It's about so it. weird, isn't it? Nobody reported hearing the gunshot? No one reported hearing a gunshot, but all the articles were saying it was a crazy hot night in Texas, so everyone had their air conditioners on. So, like, yeah, maybe... Guns make a lot of noise. And what kind of gun was it? It was a 9mm R begins with an R. Ro... Ro... I don't know. Was it a Ruger? Maybe. Um... I mean, I'm not... I'm not a gun expert, but I know 9 millimeters. Like... I'm I'm actually surprised that 9 millimeter would shoot through the wall and still have enough force to enter this guy's body and... And bounce around like that. Isn't it the craziest story you've ever heard? It is. I mean, I guess the guy confessed, but I just there's something about it that I don't quite buy. But it certainly sucks that, you know, I mean, innocent people get caught up in this crap all the time. Yeah. Um, so, 
I there's a ID investigation discovery show called Unusual Suspects, and season six, episode four, they cover this. Um, it's very like high drama how they tell it. Um, but I also got information from a Vanity Fair article written by Mark Bowman or Bowden, who's like a big true crime writer, and that was really well written. Um, it's true crime how a mysterious Beaumont, Texas murder was solved. Um, yeah. But it, everyone just kind of accepts that it's this bullet. I mean, I have to say, I kind of accept that it's the bullet. I'm not saying. I'm just saying there's some, there's something about it that just seems odd it's to crazy. It doesn't quite. Well, that is crazy. Now you're going to be in a deep Reddit rabbit hole, aren't you? Maybe. I might. You're going to get in the dark web of the fifth page of the Google search. Wait, is the dark web located on the fifth page of the Google search? It's just like deep into it. That's what I consider the dark web, is if I'm researching a story and I get to like the fifth or sixth page, that feels like the dark web. Yeah, I don't (laughs) think that's the dark web. I think that's... I know when I start, <laughs> this is a shameful, shameful admission, but sometimes when I Google myself, I like to see how many pages in I can get <laughs> that it's all me before before it starts breaking up and I get another, and there's another Aaron Sagers or whatever. I've done pretty good, actually, so I know. Look, yes, people, I do research myself. I like to see how deep in I can get. I've never done that. I should do it. It's pretty good. I think I, uh, last time I checked, I at least got 10 pages in. Oh my God, that's so, a lot. I don't even know if I have enough for one page. Well, we'll make it happen with the success of Nightmarica, okay? <laughs> um, actually, Nightmarica does pop up on the first page when you research my name, so. Heck yeah. Uh, heck yeah. All right, well, that is a strange tale of murder, very tragic circumstances. While you were telling it, I don't know what made me think about this, but just odd things that happen in hotel rooms. You know, there's there's the lots of urban legends about bodies and bodies hidden in beds and bodies in hotel and motel rooms. Oh, hotel Brent, motel I'm so in. Yeah. Um, and now that song's going to be stuck in my head, thanks. The <laughs> Yeah, you, I'm surprised you haven't heard about these urban legends about people that maybe check into a hotel and they're going to sleep or whatever, and then maybe they smell something odd and they lift the mattress and there's like a body <gasps> shoved in a box spring or, oh or various my legends God. along those lines. So a lot of that, I'm, I'm shocked, shocked I tell you that you have not heard that, that one. Well, that is... A lot of that is legend based, but there are some instances of look, people do die in hotels literally all the time. And and fun fact, just cuz someone dies in a hotel doesn't mean that it's not like they're clearing out that mattress or whatever. They're just True. Oh. And and unless it's a really gory, violent death, you know, it's just a quick cleanup or whatever. Oh, so, God. Now I never want to stay at a hotel. Ew. Oh, yeah. Think about it. It's, you know, and these businesses, especially if it's an independently run operation, they need to flip that room and make money on it again. So it's it's kind of in and out type of type of thing. So, but... That said, the legends of people getting shuffed in box springs, there is some truth to it, but it's not necessarily as widespread as uh, as the legend claims. And I'm not going to quote facts because I don't have them in front of me. But, yeah, there are stories of it, and there's some credence to some of it. But that's not going to be my story. But that made me think about it. There's also the story, and maybe I'll do this for the Patreon, of the... The man that checked into a hotel to test out his auto decapitation device that he invented, and so something that something else I thought about. Yeah, let's but do that for the Patreon. Instead, I for this story just so happens I'm also hanging out in Texas, and like I said, there's so many great haunted hotels out there allegedly, but. Whether I would I do one that I've been in, one that I've gone to, or something else entirely. Well, 
I settled on the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas. Now, I love Austin. It's mm -hmm. a great town. And I love the Driscoll Hotel. And I've been there many, many times. But I have to admit, I don't think I've ever stayed there. I've gone to the bar a lot and I've toured the building because it's a great building. But I don't think I've stayed there. Now, this, is, this building is when it was... Created. It, it was opened in December 1886, and when it was opened, it was established to to really be a crown jewel of the state capital, uh, a hotel that would rival the hotels of New York and Chicago, mm -hmm. and at that time, St. Louis, San Francisco. It's going to be a showpiece for the entire town. It costs four hundred thousand dollars to build, which was the equivalent of in today in today's money 92 million dollars it is a romanesque revival architecture and the oldest hotel operating in austin and in fact there was a time i believe in late 60s 69 maybe where it had changed hands many times throughout its 134 history 34 year history at one point, I think in the late 60s, it was scheduled to be demolished because it had fallen into disrepair. And the story goes around town that there were bulldozers literally about to take this thing out. And the people gathered around and stopped it. And then they started raising money through bake sales and bond sales mm -hmm. and everything to save the hotel. Now, today, it's always been a place where famous faces have gathered some more recent people in recent years would be like Annie Lennox, the singer from mm, yeah, yeah. Rhythmics, Roy Orbison, Jerry Garcia, both dead, Matthew McConaughey, Luke Wilson. So, you know, it is known for being a place where people gather. Also, in 1898, it was the site of the first long-distance phone call in Whoa. Austin. And... In Austin. And it's also the site where LBJ, President Lyndon Baines Johnson, and Lady Bird Johnson had their first date. Aww, so, cute! And incidentally, I almost got in a fight there. So, <gasps> in the bar. That's but, the most important story. What were you fighting over? Well, I didn't fight. It was just some drunk oh. dude that was getting out of hand and things escalated. But... Yeah, uh, that's a that's a story for another time. There are faces and names involved in that one that do not want to be added oh. to that publicly. But the story is, okay, so it was opened by Colonel Jesse Driscoll. And Colonel Jesse Driscoll, I just love saying that name. Yeah, that's a great name. His Driscoll Hotel. Now, the Colonel was a cattle baron and he actually during the civil war sold cattle to the confederate army which some people say that he earned his money that that was blood money i don't know if i feel that way but he was a cattle baron and he established the driscoll hotel and in the lobby actually is a portrait of him and it's an 1890 mm -hmm portrait of Colonel Jesse Driscoll. Sadly, he never quite lived to see it because he died. It was, I think, only a couple years after it opened, he passed away. Some people say that he died betting, literally betting the house, that he oh. had a bit of a gambling problem. Shoot. And... <laughs> Uh, that he bet the house and lost it. Other people say that instead of losing it in a poker game, he was wiped out financially during a winter that just destroyed his, his cattle. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, he died in 1890, same year that the portrait was painted, but the portrait was commissioned, I think, four months after his death. However, people say that if you look at this portrait by the painter William Henry Huddle, 
who did a famous painting of Davy Crockett, which is in the Texas State Capitol. Some people say that if you look at him, that portrait, the expression changes sometimes. Mm, don't they say that about the Mona Lisa too? Do they? I totally made that up. I don't know. I think it was just that she has a bit of a mysterious expression. Ah, but, but his face changes. Some say. And that his gaze is a little disconcerting. There's also a legend that there was a bullet that struck the painting a long time ago when two Texas lawyers had a duel there. Wow. But now, as far as ghost stories, they the story is that Jesse Driscoll has a restless spirit that wanders the halls of this this hotel. And he was a big cigar smoker, and people say they catch a whiff of cigar smoke and that the lights flicker in the hotel, and that apparently he's especially fond of appearing to women. Now, the cigar smoke thing, let me say this. The, this comes up a lot in paranormal yeah. stories. Well, cigar smoke, walls will absorb... Mm -hmm aromas like that and hold on to them throughout the years so who knows maybe it is cigar smoke wafting through the halls or maybe it's just sort of been trapped in those walls but the lead singer for the concrete for the group concrete blonde wrote a song called ghost of a texas ladies man and it has lyrics about seeing a face in the shower door and mm -hmm. a ghost floating above her bed and she refers to an ectoplasmic lover from the other <laughs> side. Now, ghost of a Texas lady man, for a long time, I guess, people thought that Jeanette Napolitano, the lead singer of the band, was talking about her own experience at the Driscoll Hotel. But instead, the story, the inspiration for that song, seems to be about Annie Lennox's own ghost experience at the Driscoll. Oh. And that apparently she was in town on tour and could not decide what to wear that night. And she set out two dresses on the bed before showering. And when she returned, one of the dresses had been put away. <gasps> and that the ghost of the Driscoll Hotel had decided themselves, made, it, made themselves the stylist for Annie Lennox for the night. That, that comes from the Austin Chronicle. That's creepy and convenient. And convenient, yeah. The whole notion of ghosts watching while you're showering or pooping or whatever mm -hmm. is always a little creepy. Super creepy. Especially pooping. I mean, can you imagine? And this is the this is the part of Nightmerica where we talk about bodily functions. <laughs> but I will say, I'm not really scared too much of ghosts. I can be easily startled. But the notion of if you are pooping and you have a ghostly encounter, that is something I find terrifying to yeah. think about because you're not in a situation where you can just jump up and like run out of a room. Gross. Right? Uh, yeah, gross. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, but it's especially <laughs> terrifying. You are literally a captive audience. Yeah. So just think about that, folks. If you're going to if you if you're going to encounter a ghost, just make certain it's not while you're pooping. Anyhow, there is another paranormal breaststroke, if you will, at the Driscoll over on the fifth floor. There's a painting called Love Letters. And it's of a little girl holding a bouquet of flowers in one hand and a letter in the, in the other. Now, the story of this is that the little girl in the painting is of Samantha. Samantha Houston the four-year-old daughter of Senator Temple Lee Houston. Temple Lee Houston actually was the son of Sam Houston. So these are all legends and icons of Texas history. Now, why would the painting of a little girl be so important at this hotel? And why would a little girl's painting be hanging in the hotel? Well, she did live there for about three months with her senator father, and their family. And the tale is, in 1887, she was chasing around a leather ball in the hallways, and it started to head towards the staircase, magnificent staircase, mm -hmm. the Driscoll Hotel. 
and she tripped and followed the ball down the steps and fell to her death. Aww. And there's even the story that before her burial, Senator Temple Lee Houston contacted an Austin artist to produce a lifelike painting of his deceased daughter and that her own corpse was used as a model of the painting. And now... Oh, God. The story goes that she can be seen chasing after the ball in spectral form, and others claim to hear childish giggles in the hotel on the mezzanine floor late at night. Some also say, similar to the painting of... Driscoll himself, some say that her expression in the painting changes. Other reports are that people might feel ill when looking at the painting, or there's a strong sensation of even being levitated. <gasps> okay, that's cool. I want to feel levitated. Further, there, for a good long time, Legends of staff and even guests would leave candy on a table underneath Samantha's picture and that the candy would disappear overnight. So, okay, this is where I get to be a bit of a buzzkill. A few things here. First off, as far as the candy, maybe the overnight staff removed it or rodents got it. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you leave candy out. The... So... Going down a research hole, I cannot verify. So, Senator Temple Houston, who is really just an interesting character, but he and his wife had multiple children. Many uh, did not survive past infancy. However, four of them did. He did have a daughter, but her name was not Samantha. If my research holds, and I believe it does, he did have a son named Sam. However, Sam was born in 1898 and lived until 1952. In fact, and his daughter lived until yeah, long past uh, childhood as well. So hmm. I cannot find record of a young girl who yeah. had died there. Hmm. And so Temple Houston did give a dedication speech to the to the new Capitol building in 1888 in Texas. Uh, and I can't find some people have said he paid tribute to his daughter in this speech, in this dedication speech. But I do not see a citation of that. I can't see it in the speeches, the text of the speeches that I have seen. However, I have talked to people. In Texas, in Austin, that say they do think that a little girl spirit or what they believe to be the spirit of a little girl roams those halls. So maybe there is some sort of spirit there and this story has been built up around it. They certainly refer to the ghost as Samantha at the Driscoll. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Let me just run through a couple other. Oh, the other thing about the painting itself is the painting definitely could not be Samantha Houston, even if she did exist, because the painting was painted by a British artist named uh, Garland, and it alternately is called L uh, Charles Trevor Garland, to be precise, and some titles of it are love letters, but I've also seen it referred to as a Christmas greeting, and the painting that's hanging up now in the Driscoll is actually a reproduction of that Garland painting. And this is mm. painted, this reproduction is by Richard King. So it doesn't seem like that's Samantha. Even okay. if this little girl existed and she died and maybe even had a different name, this would not be her in the painting. However, you know, people put energy on things that might lead to attachments. Okay, beyond that, there is supposedly the ghost of room 525, and this is said to be the most haunted room in the hotel. So, the Driscoll is known for the tale of suicide brides, two of them, in fact. 
Two young women were believed to be in the hotel for their honeymoon and that they committed suicide 20 years apart from each other in the same room. And the room was closed for renovation for a time and since it was reopened there's especially strange things like leaks, sensations, voices being heard, unexplained noises. This is something that the staff at the hotel say did happen. I've not found newspaper reports of it. But one of the stories seems to be more likely to be true. And one of the stories, so room 525 is one of the rooms this has been associated with. The other room this is associated with is 329. Now this story does appear to be true that there was a woman, there, there seems to be, there seems to be a woman that was checked into the room, 329, and her, after her fiance had called off their wedding. Aww. And the woman went on a shopping spree and racked up a lot of money on a credit card. They've seen forty thousand dollars as the figure there. Oh, Texas geez. Highway. It's what put year? That as forty thousand dollars. What year? In the night, early nineteen nineties. Okay, okay. Or late eight, or late nineteen eighties, and that. I, and I'm curious if this was the ex's credit card. But after the shopping spree, she went back to her room and shot herself. Mm. It was very tragic mm. and. As a result, the report is that her ghost has been seen walking down the hallways carrying shopping bags. This one, so some of the some of these stories are that these two deaths occurred in one room. Some that they're two different rooms. One of these deaths seems to be possibly closer to the truth. The hotel says that they have documentation of it, but the hotel, hotel people, some hotel staff I've spoken to have claimed to have seen this ghost of this woman walking by with shopping bags. So that one's verified by the hotel or by people who have worked at the hotel. Mm -hmm. There's also perhaps a separate spirit on the fourth floor of a woman, and again, some people say this is suicide. I don't know, this seems like a lot of suicides that they're reporting there, but again, it's possible that it's supposedly a spirit of a woman crying on the fourth floor. People report hearing this. Sort of less tragic than that are is the tale of Mrs. Bridges from the early 1900s, an employee who worked the front desk and worked there for a long time and that she was really serious about looking after the visitors, the, cust- the, the, the guests that checked in the hotel. And so that even now, she's seen walking from the vault. There's this very cool vault in the hotel lobby. And she's seen walking into that vault and out of that vault into the middle of the lobby where there used to be the old front desk and that she has, is wearing a Victorian style dress. Hmm. And some people say they smell flowers or roses associated with her, but that she was this kindly ghost who continues to look after the guests. The way that's reported sounds like a residual haunt to me. Yeah. Also, the story of LBJ, again, President Johnson, had his first date with his wife there and apparently the Driscoll was his favorite place in Austin, Texas. So some people say there's been reports of going into the ballroom and catching a reflection of the president in the mirrors. Oh, that's cute though. And, and even seeing his wife with him out of the corner of their eye. If my parents haunted where they had their first date, it would be a Dairy Queen. Yeah. 
Excellent. Why not a, a haunted Dairy Queen? Now, all of that said, so the Driscoll Hotel throughout the years has sometimes not wanted to talk about its haunted history and other times leaned into it. And right now, I would say that we're fortunately in a time where they're leaning into that haunted history a little bit more. But I have spoken to a lot of people throughout the years that have stayed there, that have lived in Austin. And one of the stories that I've heard is that, so this comes to me from folks that are not trying to sell a story, not trying to gain mm -hmm. fame from this. They have nothing really to get out of this and comes from reliable sources that they were checked into the hotel. I believe it was supposed to be for two nights. So they're sleeping at the hotel and suddenly in their room, in the middle of the night, all the lights come on, all the lights, bedside light, overhead light, bathroom lights, everything even though there was different switches for each of these. So they, this couple, young couple, got up and turned them all off. And then in the morning, they go into the bathroom and the there's water everywhere. Hmm. And like a giant puddle in the, in the bathroom. Now, the faucet had been off all night, but water everywhere. And in front of the sink, there was a garbage can that was turned over and placed in front of the sink, which I don't want to read too much into it, but it sounds like a mischievous child yeah. stepping on top of that garbage can and reaching yeah. the sink, the faucet. And this was so notable that they did check out of the hotel. They were too scared. They checked out of the hotel and didn't want to stay another night. And the people behind this story, there's one person that is into ghosts and stuff, and, and but the, the girl, the girlfriend is not, is not, wants nothing to do with it, but they were both really scared about this one. And that they still get freaked out. This was like three or four years ago. They still get pretty freaked out when they tell this story. Hmm. There's another person, and I might have to follow up on this. We might need a part two because research was taking me down a hole and I had to cut it off. But I know someone, well, actually this is through a friend of a friend, but someone who worked there for a long time and that they had endless experiences including an invisible person a person that would be in their office sometimes at the hotel typing mm. and they would encounter this frequently so and if you look on the driscoll hotel instagram site from october 16th there they held this ghosty event and the comments on their Instagram page exploded with people sharing all of their stories. Oh. So I, I will say this, that some of the history is a little bit, a little bit difficult to verify with it. And there is a lot of history behind it, but I do tend to think that there's some solid lore behind the Driscoll Hotel hauntings. And I, I want to finish this story with a, I don't know, maybe we can call it, maybe this should be a recurring segment. It's a review I found oh about God, yes. the hotel. We can, yes. we can call it, we can call it Yelps, Paranormal Reviews. <gasps> so this comes from a review site. And this is hilarious. The Driscoll Hotel is haunted. During checkout, I found out that there must have been a ghost who appeared to have dined in the Driscoll restaurant and charged it all to my room for over $400 for the meal. <laughs> Co coincidentally, my wife and I also ate at the Driscoll that very same night with a separate bill and a separate receipt. 
<gasps> when I asked the receptionist about it, they seemed annoyed that I was disrupting a charge for one of the two meals eaten that very same night at the Driscoll. So uh, it's someone disputing a charge on their bill. But <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I do like that they framed it. And it ended up being a, a, you know what? I read the whole review. So it was a good review. But we should, maybe that should be a recurring segment. Yelps, that would be awesome. Paranormal reviews. Send them to us. So, okay. All right. That was a heavy one this week. Well, yours was. Yeah. I feel like wow. they both the wind were just... is still clinging. Yeah, now Aaron's getting attacked. Yeah, by a, either a ghost or a hurricane. Who knows? But but the Driscoll, I will also say, they have great blankets. Or at least they, mm. they used to. Really soft, cozy blankets. Oh, so, I love a good bed. Like, good hotel bed. And, and if, um, if anyone out there, during this research, I really, I really think... I'm going to pursue, now that they're leaning into sort of the ghosty stuff, I'm going to pursue doing a talk or something there. So if anybody is in Texas and would be interested in doing a paranormal talk at the Driscoll Hotel, you know, make it happen. Well, before we get out of here, how about some paranormal pop culture? What are you, what are you into this week? Um, well, I also don't know if mine is technically paranormal, but it has to do with the fact that we talk about the fact that I've never seen like any movie ever. And I just watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, over the past, like, two weeks. Um, I, I know I'm going to offend a lot of people. It's, like, not my favorite movie. I like the first two, but I did not care for the last one. I think, you know, I think in the scheme of things, it's okay if, uh, if you didn't like it and if people are <laughs> offended by it. There's a, there's a lot, a lot else going on in the world right now. So, you know... I, I'd rather people have a. I, I'd rather have a, a nerd debate over Lord of the Rings as opposed to some of the other stuff out there. But uh, it's a. I, I really enjoy it. You've not read the books. I have not and read the books. I did read The Hobbit, and I didn't like it. Did not like it. Correct. Well, this is here's my controversial statement. I think I like The Hobbit more than Lord of the Rings. See, and Hobbit, Devin's sister is, feels the same way. I think it's a great book. I mean, I think Lord of the Rings is really great, too. It's just something about The Hobbit speaks to me a little bit more. But <laughs> Lord of the Rings is a pretty epic movie trilogy, especially when you watch the extended editions of them. I, I really enjoy them, but I can also say it's hard to consume them all at once. It just feels like feels like you're going on a... A big old road trip, you know? Yeah. I had a lot of opinions about Bilbo. Like, why did no one hold him accountable for, like, starting all of this and then, like, disappearing? Um, I love Gollum. I love when Gollum Smeagol discovers potatoes. I found that quite charming. Potatoes! Yeah. What's potatoes, precious? I love that. Wow. Um, and then I really don't like Frodo. Like Sam carries what? Sam carries the weight of like this entire journey. Like Sam well, is especially in the third movie, Sam does everything. And then there's Frodo just being like a whiny little bee, and he gets all of the glory after. And I'm like, no, that's not right. But at least Sam gets married to Rosie Cotton or whatever her name was. He gets something out I've, of it. I've done a, a lot of hosting events with all of the hobbits, I think. And Elijah Wood a, a couple times and Sean Astin a bunch of times because he was also in The Goonies, which is one of my favorite movies. And Stranger and, Things. And Stranger Things, yeah. Bob Newby, I think. Yeah. Or, um, but, yeah, Sean Astin is a great guy. But also, people bring this up all the time at cons that really, yeah, Sam, Sam Wise Ganji was the guy that kind of yes. brought it home. He's the laborer, but, and yet he has to say Mr. Frodo. No. Frodo's, he doesn't have to say that. He, they're friends, but it's that's the other thing. is they're, they're best friends, and he's looking out for his best friend. And he's, he's being, giving him strength at Frodo's weakest moment. No. And isn't that, what that a, isn't that a great best friend relationship? Well, I don't have a lot of friends, so I don't. 
I mean, I guess Catherine would do that, but I wouldn't do that for anybody. Does that make me Frodo? Is that way I don't like him? Because no, he reminds Frodo's, me of myself? No, Frodo's not, like, opposed to friends. Oh. I'm, I think I'm more of a guy. I don't think truthfully. you're... I don't think you're a Frodo. <laughs> I, sorry. I'm not... Uh, I'm not, uh, not to cast no. aspersions. I, think I don't I'm think a I'm a Frodo. I'm a Gollum. I think I would be... I would probably be a Gimli. Which yeah, one's Gimli? probably a Gimli. Um, he's the dwarf. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's got an axe. Yeah. And he's, and he's pretty like, cranky. Yeah, you would be surly. Gimli. Yeah. And he's got a beard. You know, I think... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm probably a Gimli. Yeah. So, we all we all want to be Aragorn or whatever. But oh, so handsome. Woo. You know, all the cast. I, I think, I think most of them have matching tattoos. Oh, that's cute. From, we should have a matching yeah. tattoo. Well, we haven't filmed in New Zealand for <laughs> I don't know couple years in a row or however long it took them to like that was really like the fellowship the lord of the rings trilogy really was like a fellowship yeah because they did it all at the same time yeah they they filmed it uh, all back to back so it was kind of insane so yeah i'm pretty certain they all have matching tattoos from from the situation as well so it's pretty cool uh, this has been a good Lord. This should be the Lord of the Rings podcast. Actually, it Absolutely shouldn't because I don't. Not. I don't think either of us have the expertise to really talk no. as much at length. No one people. wants my opinion. Hmm. Well, maybe they do. Maybe your take <laughs> on something that you're being newly exposed to is is worthwhile. I think people want your opinion. Okay. Do you have a paranormal pop culture, or do you just want to piggyback on that? Oh, yeah, because I was was stalling for time. It doesn't have to be paranormal-related. Like, is there something, like, nice that's happened in your life that you're excited about? I like that you're just checking in that way. (laughs) All right. I have one. Okay. And it was sent as a birthday gift. And... Oh, yeah, Aaron's birthday is in four days from when this comes out. Yes, that's true. And it's a book of short stories called 13, 13 Tales of Horror by 13 Masters of Horror. Oh, awesome. And it's on my nightstand right now. I forgot that I was actually already reading this. That's great. And you've got stories from the likes of R.L. Stein and Christopher Pike and D.E. Atkins and... It's a, it was a lovely gift that surprised me in the mail. It was sent my way. That's and, great. And I was uh, quite happy to receive it. I also received a another book that I'm not even going to mention because it's going to probably pop up in a future episode, and I will reference it. So I will preserve the mystery. So, okay. Great. Coolio. Wow, we went long. We did go long. Something that I'm going to ask you guys to do is over on – Apple Podcasts, leave a review if you yeah. can and give us a few stars because that's actually really good and it helps push us up the list so that way we can get more traction and thus get more listeners and keep doing this. Yeah. And also, you know, we uh, we I, I actually do like the Manscaped products and it's cool that we're sponsored by them and it'd be cool if you could show some support as well. So head to Manscaped and... Use the code NIGHTMERICA for 20% off and free shipping off your order. So yeah, check that out. Yeah, and if you got something, post a picture in, or like tweet and tag us. I don't, not if you're drunk. Oh, my God, no. Just like with them holding the box. You made it weird. <laughs> well, I don't know. You even saying holding the box <laughs> doesn't make it less weird. No, no, no. Not, I mean, not, not your junk, just... The package. Wait, no, 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 not the package. <laughs> I think you made it weird. I don't, I mean, sure, yes. If you ordered something because of us, let us know and take a safe for work photo of the thing that you ordered. 
I absolutely do not want any dick pics. Brit, phrasing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, then this is a very strange episode. Let's, let's get out of here. Thanks for listening. Please consider giving us a review on Apple Podcasts following us on social media and sharing the show with your friends. And if you're able, we appreciate your support on patreon.com slash nightmerica so we can keep bringing you more spooky stories. And if you'd like to share your own paranormal stories or seek paranormal advice for entertainment purposes only, email us at nightmericashow at gmail.com. <laughs>